Hello and welcome to Video Notes. Today we're going to talk about two chapter sections, 9.1, which is an overview of cellular respiration, and then 9.2, which starts to get your feet wet in the process of cell respiration. We'll talk more about that in class later this week. So the two essential questions for 9.1 are explain where organisms get the energy they need for life processes, and two, define cellular respiration. I know we all feel this way when we are hungry, you feel a weak, a little tired. It's because the food that you need to eat is your source of energy. If you're hungry, that means you need to get that energy to supply your body with fuel. So think about this. How does the food you get convert it into usable form of energy for your cells? So in other words, think about all this food on this page. How does this food get converted into usable energy that your cells use? All that food from the last page came from one daily meal or one meal or several meals that Michael Phelps eats in one day. So you can look at a breakdown of what he eats, for example, for breakfast, lunch, dinner, and each meal is 4,000 calories. An average person like me or Mrs. Kaiser would eat about 2,000 calories per day. The reason why Michael Phelps has such a high caloric intake is because of his energy demands. He's constantly swimming and practicing and training. That's his job. And so to be able to fuel his body with energy, he has to make up for it by eating more food. Also keep in mind and kind of thinking back to ecology, autotrophs, like plants, algae, and some bacteria, they make their own food. Heterotrophs, like Ms. Kayser and myself, we are consumers. Um, or heterotrophs, meaning that we will consume other organisms for food. And energy is stored in our food, and how we express how much energy is within our food is in calories. So if you look down here, we have apples, bacon, you name it. Um, each of those pictures show how much food equates to 200 calories. So this much butter is 200 calories, which compares to this many apple slices, which is also 200 calories. Energy is stored in the bonds of our food, specifically the chemical bonds. So think about, for example, a steak. Steak, meat, it's proteins inside that food, and the proteins are held together, or a protein is held together by lots of chemical bonds. Remember, in those bonds is the stored energy. And when you break the bonds in your food, it's releasing the energy that's once stored to make ATP. And this would be our usable energy. This is what our body's going to use for life processes, growth, development, you name it. And down here is a nice little picture. It kind of shows you the apple is the food source. Inside there is glucose. And the glucose, after you digest it, will be broken down into ATP. ATP. And take a look at this picture. See if anything seems familiar to you, like the organelle or other products or reactants of this equation. And that equation in the picture represents cellular respiration. So this is a new process for us. This is what is responsible taking, or this process is responsible for taking energy in our food and converting it into energy we can use. So to do that, you have to have oxygen present. If you look back at this picture, you can see to get the glucose from my apple, I need oxygen. Okay, that's how I'm going to unlock the energy to make my ATP. And you probably saw some other products in that, that picture, which we're going to talk about here in the equation. And it's important to know both equations. The one on the top is the chemical formula, and the one below is more of the English translation. So you know both, make sure you know both. Um, it shows how oxygen is needed in cell respiration as a reactant. With that, we're going to take our food energy, glucose, and we're going to break it down into different products, one being carbon dioxide, water, and energy like ATP. Okay, notice how many molecules of water, carbon dioxide, sorry, oxygen, carbon dioxide, and water are either needed or made from those processes. And think about if that equation looks familiar to anything we've talked about in class. Lastly, cells release chemical energy in food molecules very slowly. 
if it was really fast, a lot of that energy that we would want to be um, used to help make ATP would be lost in the form of heat. So it's important that that cell respiration process is slow so you can obtain the most energy from your food. Okay, so the next part, chapter 9.2, is going to be talking about the whole process of cellular respiration. So the essential question for 9.2 that you should have now into your notes is describe what is happening in the three stages of cellular respiration, glycolysis, Krebs cycle, and the electron transport chain. So let's take a look. So cellular respiration has three main stages, and these go in order. So it first starts with glycolysis, the Krebs cycle, and then it goes on to the electron transport chain for the final step. So let's take a look at that first step, glycolysis. And with our knowledge of root words, we should be able to break this down and understand what stage one is all about. Lysis means to break apart. Glyco, we can think of glucose. So we're breaking apart glucose, and that's exactly what glycolysis is doing. But this only produces a small amount of the energy. The rest of the energy is going to be made later on in cellular respiration. So let's take a look. So glycolysis is taking glucose, which is represented here with six um, black spheres. Each black sphere represents a carbon. Remember, glucose has six carbons in it. And then glycolysis breaks that glucose in half. It breaks that bond. And remember, we're breaking a bond, so that releases energy. And then it's going to form it into um, these two pyruvate molecules. So each pyruvate molecule has three carbons in it. Then those pyruvates will go on to the next part of cellular respiration, which is called the Krebs cycle. So in the Krebs cycle, a little bit more energy is being used. So those, that pyruvate is entering into the mitochondria and being used in the Krebs cycle to produce some more energy as well as some CO2. So then the la last step of cellular respiration is called the electron transport chain. And this is where most of the energy comes from in uh, cellular respiration. So after it's gone through the glycolysis and the Krebs cycle, it goes on to the electron transport chain. And this um, uses oxygen as well to produce that energy. Okay, so let's talk about oxygen. So pathways of cellular respiration that require oxygen are called aerobic. And here we can break down our root words too. Aero meaning the presence of oxygen. So aerobic means you have to have the presence of, oxy presence of oxygen in order for this to occur. So let's take a look. So the Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain are the two parts that are aerobic, so they require oxygen. If you don't have oxygen, these two things cannot happen. And then both the Krebs and the electron transport chain take place inside the mitochondria. And that makes sense. Going back from our cells unit, the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. It's going to produce that energy. So let's talk about it. So the aerobic process of cellular respiration need oxygen, remember, aero, presence of oxygen. So that is the Krebs and the electron transport chain, and that occurs in the mitochondria. So this picture shows that after glycolysis, it's going to enter the mitochondria and go under the Krebs cycle and then eventually the electron transport chain. Okay, so let's think about it. Which one will be anaerobic? Well, glycolysis is going to be the anaerobic process. So anaerobic, a, or an, is um, uh, without, so without oxygen, um, it's, it's where our root comes from, and that's how we create the word anaerobic. So anaerobic does not require oxygen to run. But it is still part of cellular re respiration, it just doesn't need oxygen for that first part. And this takes place in the cytoplasm before you get into the mitochondria. So the anaerobic part does not need oxygen. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. I, I was supposed to quiz. No. <clears throat> All right, technical difficulties, but we are still going. Okay, so oxygen and energy. Um, the anaerobic process is the glycolysis, and the aerobic processes are Krebs and electron transport chain inside the mitochondria, glycolysis is in the cytoplasm. All right, so now that you've taken notes, 
couple things you need to do. So if you're in Ms. Gilpin's class, you need to answer these questions on the Google form. And if you are in Ms. Kaiser's class, you're going to answer these questions in your notes. So the first question is, cells use energy available in food to make the final energy rich compound called water, glucose, ATP, or ADP. Okay, which two stages, sorry, number two, which two stages of cellular respiration take place in the mitochondria and require oxygen? So list the two stages. Last question, what questions do you still have from chapter 9.1 and 9.2 video notes? Please note that 9.2 will be discussed furthermore in class following day.